Yo guys, welcome back to another video on the channel and today we're going to be taking a look at everything coming to Black Ops 6 and Warzone in Season 1 when the crossover for Warzone does happen. Well, before we do get into it guys, if you are new around, be sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications to not miss any more videos on the channel. If you do enjoy it, smash thumbs up and let me know your thoughts on all this stuff in the comments below. But let's jump straight into it right now. Okay guys, so as you can see, we've got the entire blog of Black Ops 6 on screen right now and I'm going to zoom in for this image so you guys can see exactly what image it is that I'm looking at right now and what we've got here. So this is just a standard season roadmap image that we do see every single season. As we can see, we've got Black Ops 6 maps that are coming for multiplayer, some new gameplay updates, some new stuff for zombies, some of the bundles that we can expect to see, including the replacer. We've then got the war zone with the new maps and stuff like that, as well as well as gameplay updates, rank play, and all of those sort of things, as well as brand new weapons to come at the start and during the season as well, as well as new operators and new events. But let's just jump straight into the details and the bits that we want to know. Just the general overview and the whole just ins and outs of black ops 6 the overview we don't really care about we're sort of going to just jump into the maps the modes war zone weapons zombies all of that sort of different stuff so if we do come down just a little bit we should start seeing some black ops 6 multiplayer maps which we are going to do the first one here being hideout the new map that we haven't yet seen before at the start of the season it looks a pretty small map as we have seen it as you see it says medium size again looks pretty small like we have seen for a lot of the black ops 6 maps a lot of people are disappointed with the black ops 6 maps as of right now so hopefully these new maps that they're adding are slightly better and just increase the amount of maps that people are happy to play on so we are going to get hideout as the first new one sharpen your combat skills in this mid-sized multiplayer map featuring extensive training site including target practice an obstacle course and a life-like recreation of a vault and security room and to help plan for the next mission tip the Liberty crime family master omni movement in the training area and bus depot or climb up the center bridge to cover both locations from powerful vantage point so the first one is going to be hideout Next is going to be Heirloom there, and as we can see, this is a very, very small map. It is a small size map. It is a 2v2 map or a 6v6 for the face-off mosh pit playlist, which is where that one will appear. So again, another very, very small map. As you can see by the image here, it looks like a super, super small map. I'll try and chuck the image on screen a bit bigger than what I'm looking at it on here. So then you guys can see the full images. You know, you can see the full layout of the map and stuff like that. It's slightly bigger and takes up more of the screen. So hopefully that is working whilst I'm trying to do that. So the next that one is going to be Heirloom there, and then we have got Extraction, guys, which is going to be like once again a medium sized map which looks like it's going to be on the sort of ports where there is some helipads and things like that with sort of ins and outs and areas as you can see slightly different layers you look like you've got a vantage point at the window there looking over the docks or the helipads you've got a ladder going up and down between two different layers there as well and then, guys, we've got Hisenda returning, which we did obviously see in Black Ops 4 most recently, and a very, very good map. Actually, a really big fan of this map. I love how this played. I think it is actually a really good map. Not so many people liked it as much as I probably did, but personally, I'm a big fan of this map. I'm excited to see it return. It is a really well-played-out map. It's got three very key lanes, and they're very easy to identify the three different lanes. You've got the left, right, and the middle, and it is a very, very well-laid-out map, and I per personally really enjoy how this does play. So I'm very excited to see Hisenda return. We've then got Racket, which is going to be once again again a small sized map there a strike map which is gonna be the face off mosh pit once again and then we do have nuketown holiday coming in mid-season as we normally do if it's a treyarch or a black ops game we do get a christmas version of nuketown same as we would have in a modern warfare game with shipment we normally get a christmas version but this year of course we're gonna be in black ops we are getting a christmas version of nuketown which is always quite cool they always actually do a really good job with this making the lighting feel a little bit different making it feel slightly different but obviously play like the exact same nuketown that we do and know and love <laughs> Moving on now to some multiplayer modes. We've got Ransack, which is going to be brand new at the launch of the new season. And this is going to see you looting gold bars from crates dotted around the area of the operations on 6v6 maps. Once gathered, secure your secure loot by bringing it back to your team's stash. Naturally, this collection needs to be well guarded as the enemy team can raid your stash, meaning cohesive tactical planning between looting and defending is the key to victory. Reach the score limit or the time limit with the most gold bars and your team wins interesting how that's going to work i don't see this being a mode that a lot of people are going to jump into personally i'm not really going to go anywhere near it but it's a cool little game mode for any of you guys that like to play the slightly different game modes out of the traditional domination hardpoints tdm and all of those sort of game modes we've then got crop hunt returning prop hunt will be returning in season though not right at the launch however prop hunt it's always a fun game mode you and a couple of friends jump into it it can be really really fun i believe the last time we saw this was in cold war if i remember correctly but prop hunt is always fun i'm sure you guys know what prop hunt is you spawn in 
you're an object or an item from the map you then have to hide yourself in a position where people aren't going to suspect you to be a player and expect you to be a real object and then you just have to try and avoid obviously being hunted and then vice versa if you're hunting you have to try and find objects that are in places that they probably shouldn't be in we've then got limited time modes guys in mid-season except additional and festive limited time modes to continue into the holiday season with a full reveal at season one reloaded so we're going to get some more festive game modes to be coming when Christmas time does roll around, guys, which is super exciting. Additional loadout content, guys. We've got new perks. We've got Perk 2 Shadow at launch in the Perk 2 slot type Strategist. And this is going to make us undetectable to enemy traps and mines. This is something I'm going to be running all the time. The amount of times I've died to spree mines in this game, this is a big W. I can't wait for this perk to be added. We've then got the Shrapnel Radar, guys, which will be in the recon. Dealing blast damage to enemies will reveal them on your minimap. This includes any enemies affected by your area of effect, tacticals, lethals, and field upgrades. So if you are someone who just pings flash grenades across the map, you've set up spring mines across the map, or whatever it is, and you actually get an explosive hit marker on an opponent, they're going to flash up on your screen, and you will be able to see them through the walls and where they are in the map, which is actually very, very good. It's a very nice addition for a new perk. We've then got a new score streak slash support coming into the game, being the hand cannon. It's going to take a score of 900 to get with a mastery badge for itself. Powerful large caliber handgun with high bullet damage and penetration. This mid-level score streak, last seen in Black Ops Cold War, allows players to equip a massively powerful handgun for a finite amount of time, though it has a slow rate of fire and limited ammunition. It makes up for this with good handling, improved hip fire accuracy with faster hip fire shooting speeds, and the biggest bonus of all high penetration that can one-shot enemies. So a score streak and the uh, thing we have seen in a lot of Call of Duty games as of recent. Last time we did see this one was going to be in Cold War. It's going to be a one-shot Desert Eagle, basically, that you are going to be able to use, which is very overpowered if you can hit your shots. We've then got some new wild cards coming in, being the high roller in mid-season. When equipped, this allows the player to have a fourth score streak to earn towards during core 6v6 multiplayer matches. Might we suggest pairing it with a hand cannon? That's pretty cool. Another additional score streak. So let's say right now your score streak package is the scout post, the counter UAV, and the UAV. You could then run the harp at the end of that as well. So you have got four chances of UAVs and just having knowledge of where all your opponents are within just one life. I think that's a massive, massive W. So next up, we've got Black Ops 6 ranked play and the launch window that we can expect this in. So as we know, we've had ranked play for the last little while now in multiplayer, and it's been absolutely amazing. I love ranked play, especially when it first comes out and everyone's on a grind. I really do enjoy it. And as we can see, it is coming to Season 1 starting November 21st. And we can expect a full rules breakdown in the Black Ops 6 patch notes closer to the ranked play launch. So I'm not going to go too much into the ranked play side of things as it is still a little while away. And when it does come closer to being launched, I will just make a separate video onto it. But if you guys do just want to pause the video and read for any of this right now, then you can. But like I said, I will just go ahead and make a full ranked play video when that does drop. But as you can see, here are the skins you're going to be getting for ranked play, which are actually really, really cool. Look at that champion skin with a fiery head. That is absolutely fire. That's going to be the first in the world. You then got top 250, iridescent, crimson, diamond, platinum, gold, and ranked right there, guys. And again, in terms of some more reward stuff, there is more stuff there. But as I said, I will break all of this down at some point in its own video. So we've then got Zombies Season 1 content teaser. So we are going to be getting some more zombie stuff coming out throughout the next couple of seasons. We've got a note here. Full Zombies reveal at mid-season. Directive mode and the hand cannon come to Zombies at Season 1 launch. So when Season 1 does go live, we will be getting Directive Mode and the Hand Cannon in Zombies straight away, with an all-new map and more new content coming later in the season. While the following teaser announcements are mostly redacted, expect much of the Season 1 Reloaded blog for post to focus on Zombies, providing a detailed and mostly spoiler-free deep dive, including information on the forthcoming content. And this will include a Zombies-focused event and an LTM as well, which is very, very cool. So we've got Directive Mode, which is essentially, guys, if you haven't done the Easter Egg in Zombies and you're not too confident on doing Easter Eggs, you will just get a Directed Mode. So it's going to give you all the steps to be doing the Easter Egg. So it gives you a bit more of an easier way of completing the Easter Egg. It's going to be an easier game mode. It's not going to be as intense as the regular Zombies. It's going to be sl slightly less Zombies, slightly less difficult, and it will guide you through each step that you do need to do. So if you are looking to do the Easter Egg, but you're not as good as Zombies and you're not that great or you're not too confident doing the Easter Egg, this will be the game mode for you guys to go ahead and jump into we've then got undead terror comes to avalon and this is going to be a mid-season which i believe is going to be the new zombies map that we are getting which is super super exciting okay so after the shocking revelations of the terminus main quest weaver mayor carver and gray follow the uncovered clues to europe and discover an abandoned castle a citadel of the dead if you will that offers up a host of redacted ghoulish horrors redacted a medieval village redacted within heaven redacted abound so we are getting a new map coming at some point it does say mid-season here so hopefully mid-season off season one we will be getting a brand new zombies map as well which is very very nice 
fully equipped and fearsome foes in season. So we are going to be getting an additional Perka Cola with six new augments, also newly stocked at the Wonder Viz machines in Liberty Falls and Terminus. An additional field upgrade, an additional ammo mod, 18 new augments, three new delicious flavors of gobble gums, the hand cannon, which will be a new craftable support weapon, just like you can craft the chopper gunner and stuff like that in the crafting benches. You'll be able to do the hand cannon. New wonder weapons will be having, we'll have new wonder weapons by the looks of it. One, weapons? Yes, weapons. So we're getting new wonder weapons and new enemy types said to start the dot calls, which I'm assuming which will be in the brand new map. And then we've of course got Warzone content, guys, which I'm sure a lot of you guys are very excited for as well. So let's jump into some of the Warzone stuff. And as you would expect, the first thing it looks like we're going to be taking a look at, guys, is is going to be the new area 99 map which will be coming which is going to be essentially the new resurgence map it's going to be a lot smaller it's going to be a little bit about rebirth in an aspect if you guys haven't seen any gameplay of this all of the content creators that went to cod next did actually get their hands on this so if you just search it on youtube i'm sure there's going to be a bunch of videos up where people are actually playing through this so if you did want to get an idea of how the map plays apparently they've done a big overhaul to how the colors look and how the map actually looks visually but it's going to be the same layout of the map so if you want to get an idea of how that looks after this video just go and search resurgence area 99 game play black ops 6 or something like that and i'm sure you will be able to find stuff but this will be coming to season one in call of duty warzone and area 99 so we'll be getting this literally on day one of season one which is very very exciting so as you see, we've got the points of interest and updated sightseeing tour for you guys, just so you can have a little bit of a breakdown of what we have got. You've got the mannequin assembly room, which is going to be a little bit like this. Again, I'll try and put the images nice and big on screen for you guys so you can see them nice and clearly. We've got the mannequin assembly POI there. We then have the test site, which looks a little bit like Nuketown. You can sort of see the idea going on. They've got the buses. It's got that Nuketown feel to it. I'm not going to lie. There may be a Nuketown feel actual area, but that looks like Nuketown to me. You're then going to have the bunker, which I'm assuming is going to be, of course, a a bomb shelter bunker which is going to be a cool little area to fight in it looks like that table is going to offer a bit of cover in the middle with maybe two three maximum ways into that building so it's going to be a very intense way if you do find yourself caught in the middle of there we've then got reactor coming in guys which looks like it may be one of the key areas where a lot of people are going to land looks like there's a, a fair bit of looting to be done there but it also looks like it could be a pretty hot spot as well we've then got the cooling towers which looks a little bit low-key there's not a lot going on really to be fair looks like it's going to be out on the further edges of the map where not too many people are going to be landing just going off the images that we can see we have then got the warehouse in brackets factory which again could be a very hot spot i think a lot of people will land here it looks a little bit like superstore from the dance days you know just those smaller areas maybe the prison from rebirth island if you like saying that we do then have the manufacturing factory which looks a little bit bigger but again the same sort of thing as we did just see a moment ago we've then got the loading bay which again is probably going to be to the outside of the maps on the outskirts not going to be too crazy of an area to land just with the one building that is going on there we then do have Nuketown Shipping, which is going to be actually where Nuketown is. As you can see, the two buildings are there from Nuketown. You do have the Nuketown layout. It is just slightly changed, slightly altered to fit a Warzone map in it rather than just being the standard Nuketown map that we do know. And then we have the pods, guys, which, as you can see, very interesting looking buildings, very interesting design. But it is going to be an area where you can see. And as apparently these blues, reds and greens and stuff like that that you can see on the maps are going to be popping a little bit more. They are going to have a little bit more color than what they do look in the images. They do look a little bit gray and dreary in those images. But those are all the POIs that they have shown us from the Resurgence map. But like I said, if you did want to see any more of it, there is gameplay up on YouTube and different areas as well where you can go and check those out. So season one returning maps, we are going to have Urzikstan at launch. We already know what Urzikstan is. I'm not going to go into it. We're going to have Rebirth Island coming at some point with a launch window. So it does seem to say that Rebirth is coming at the start of Season 1 as well. So from Season 1 launch, we're going to have Area 99, Urzikstan, and Rebirth Island, which is very, very interesting. Returning modes and features, uh, we don't really need to take too much of a dive into this. Battle Royale, Resurgence, you're going to have Plunder. Uh, what else is there? Just the standard game mode you'd expect in Warzone. And then, of course, we do have Warzone ranked play coming in mid-season as well, guys. Again, with rank play, when all this sort of does get broken down, guys, I will just make a separate video on it so you guys can see, you know, the, the ins and outs of the Warzone ranked. We then do have new cinematics, infill, exfill, gulag, winner circle, etc., which, you know, is going to be exactly what you'd expect. You get the little cutscene before you load into a game. You get the cutscene at the end of the game. You get the exfill to the gulag and all those sort of different things that you'd expect. Loadout and weapons integrations launch in season. So loadout overview with dedicated melee. So of course, just like in Black Ops 6, you are going to have a dedicated melee weapon, guys. So you're going to have a primary, a secondary, and a melee weapon. Or of course, you guys can have two weapons if you do run the overkill. You can have two primaries and a melee weapon there as well. So you've got a primary, a secondary, a melee, tactical equipment, lethal, three perks, and a wild card. And then for the loadout notes, as you can see, primary weapons were divided into assault rifles, battle rifles 
SMGs, shotguns, LMGs, marksman rifles, sniper rifles, and melee. Secondary weapons are divided into pistols and launchers. Melee weapons are accessed by holding down your melee, just like you would in Black Ops 6. Then we've got the firing range. Each range weapon can be tested in the firing range. Global weapons builds utilize a weapon that you've built and created across it. So if you've got a weapon that you've built in Black Ops 6 and you really like how it feels in multiplayer, you can chuck it straight into Warzone and use that exact same build without even having to build it yourself. It's going to have camos attached. It's going to have all of that sort of stuff attached as well. Streamline Gunsmith. All weapons access to the same Streamline Gunsmith and attachments menu available in Black Ops 6 multiplayer. This means four statistical categories, firepower, accuracy, mobility, and handling, but with attachments specific to the game in question modern warfare 3's aftermarket parts for example weapon separation each weapon type assault rifle for example is separated into a vertical drop down menu just like we do see in black ops 6 exactly just like this is how you're going to see all your weapons but of course you are going to see all the different additions from the older games as well like modern warfare 3 as well so as you can see, here are all the different weapons that we are going to see. There's going to be 33 assault rifles, 10 battle rifles, 30 SMGs, 13 shotguns, 16 LMGs, 17 marksman rifles, 16 snipers, 1 primary melee. You're then going to have 17 pistols and specials, 9 launchers. Melee weapons, you're going to have 15 different ones to choose from. And in total, there is 177 different weapons that you guys can choose from in Warzone, which is going to be absolutely nuts. We all know the Black Ops 6 guns are going to be meta because it's the game they're trying to sell. They're trying to get people to buy a Black Ops 6, which means the Black Ops 6 guns are going to be meta. So if you're looking forward to Warzone, go and level your guns up as much as you possibly can. At least all the SMGs and ARs are going to be the important ones to do so. And then, as you'd expect, you've got the crossover of all the tacticals and lethals coming from Black Ops 6 into Warzone as well, which recently isn't, isn't anything we need to go into too much on. And then, of course, you've got field upgrades and kill streaks, which is going to be just the, the implication of the ones from Black Ops 6 going into Warzone. So it's not just going to be the Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 ones in Warzone. It's going to be all the Black Ops 6 stuff going into Warzone as well. Like we said before, we are going to have the pick three perk system and wild cards go into Warzone as well now. So you have three perks to choose from as well as a wild card, which can give you the additional fourth perk. Or it could give you something like overkill or, you know, you, you can see what the wild cards do in Black Ops 6 already. So you can already start planning out what classes it is that you do want to start running when Warzone. Warzone does drop guys and of course if you guys run three blue perks for example you'll get the recon speciality which will have its own specialist in Warzone as well you'll be able to then loot some perks as well the first one being while under the effects of gas circle or equipment you will move faster take reduced gas damage and can insert armor plates and then you've got shrouded which will drop a smoke grenade when entering the down state we then do have a couple of new operators being added in, Sev being the main operator that we are going to see this season built around. New combat features, of course, we're going to have Omni Movement and Body Shields coming into Warzone, as well as emotes and sprays. Basically, now we're just getting into the whole Black Ops 6 side of stuff coming into Warzone. We then do have the quick inventory as well, guys. So the, the backpack system's gone. We've now just got a quick inventory, meaning you can carry all the ammo that you've got, you can want to carry. Doesn't even matter if you're not using one of those weapons. You've got plates, gas mask, cash. You've got a streak. You've then got a, a field upgrade and then as well as all three of your weapons as well we then got spent we then got progression prestige and challenge integration so of course we're getting the mastery camo grind coming you can better prestige in warzone and that's essentially all it is going to be it's going to be the same prestige system that we have in black ops 6 coming into warzone as well guys and then the final little bits that we're going to take a look at guys are going to be the weapon details so we're going to have the creek c being added as a brand new assault rifle from the battle pass uh, that is going to be a cool one to have on. We're then going to have a new Saug SMG coming in. A Saug, I'm assuming that's how you say it. Again, going to be in the battle pass as well, guys. Uh, any more weapons? We have got the Maelstorm, which is going to be a shotgun from the event. So we are going to have to complete an event to be able to unlock this shotgun that will be coming. We've then got a new sniper rifle being the AMR Mod 4 coming in the mid-season update. Looks like a Barrett 50 cal. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be the first one to say it. Looks a little bit like a Barrett 50 cal. You guys can take what you want from that. We've then got a special event reward being the Serin 9mm. I'm assuming it's an SMG. It's an SMG characteristics as a secondary weapon. So it's actually a pistol which is going to be built like an SMG. Very, very interesting to see how this does play out. A very interesting look to that weapon as well. I'm not going to lie to you guys. And then we do have the power drill, which is going to be a melee. Okay. That's interesting. So, so far, we've got a knife, a baseball bat, and now a power drill coming as a melee. Again, it is going to be available from the event reward. So, definitely pay attention to the events they're dropping this year, guys. Look like a lot of the weapons and stuff that we are going to be unlocking is going to come through events, guys, which is very, very interesting. We then have a new weapon, the meat cleaver or the cleaver there. Again, coming from the events. So, we're going to have a lot of events or just a big event handing out a lot of new weapons, which is very, very exciting to see. We've then got new special weapon attachments. 
a 12 gauge dragon's breath barrel, a buffer weight stock, a burst fire conversion for the XM4, and a burst fire conversion for the compact. So this is interesting. These are aftermarket parts essentially coming to Black Ops 6. I didn't realize we was getting these in Black Ops 6. But it is very interesting to see that we are going to be getting them. We've then got some events. We've got the hit list in season event. Who's up next? Take your luxurious but slightly corrupt lifestyles during the hit list. You're offered to take no prisoners. Mission kill will be killed. The hit list limited time event gives players a board of contracts with one goal. Take them all out. Cross off the entire list and earn exclusive loot for hire. We have then got the Master Prestige menu, which we don't really need to jump into too much because this is exactly what you would expect. A brand new Battle Pass system and Black Cell. We are, of course, going to have a Battle Pass, which is exactly what you'd expect with the Black Cell option if you do want to go down that route. The same as we normally would before. And as we can see here, guys, from this image that I'm going to try and make big on screen, again, there is 14 different pages to the Battle Pass, and you have to complete it, I believe, page by page. I don't know if you have to do it page by page. So I believe you can just go through each page and pick stuff off of whatever page you want. So as you can see, for example, here on this one, the new weapons are on page three and page six. So I'm assuming you could probably complete page three and page six as and when you wanted to, rather than having to do page one, page two, page three, four, page... otherwise you're not going to get the new weapons for a while through the season. So I'm assuming you will be able to do it there. We've then got another battle pass image there, guys, which is what the battle pass tokens are going to look like this year round. Cool little design on them. They look a little better, a bit better than last year. And as we can see, unlocking later pages, we have a bit more information on it now. If there are specific tiers you're particularly interested in unlocking, then you simply need to get enough Battle Pass tokens to unlock the page and its tier content. For example, if you have Black Cell and 20 tokens and page 6 of the Battle Pass requires 18 more tiers to unlock, you simply spend your tokens to access the page and choose the 18 tier rewards from pages 1 to 6. Remember, there are seven total tier reward unlocks per page, but only five tiers are needed to unlock each page. This means you can save some tokens for further pages. Black Cell owners receive an added bonus, which as we know, of course, we always get extra Battle Pass tokens at the start if we do buy the Black Cell one. But yeah, new Battle Pass had a little bit of overhaul. Nothing changed too, too much. As you can see, the rewards are going to be containing things like COD points, weapon blueprints, weapon attachments, weapon reticles, weapon charms, decals and stickers, equipment skins, Gobble gums, operators, operator skins, finishing moves, emblems, calling cards, emotes, sprays, loading screens, clan tags, black cell only. Clan tags is an interesting one. And then a consumable double XP as well, guys. Not too sure what they mean by clan tags there, but that'll be interesting to see how that does work. And that, guys, is essentially everything coming in Season 1 of Black Ops 6 and Warzone. If you guys are excited for this, please be sure to smash thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel with notifications, turn off your already. And if you stayed all the way to the end, I really do appreciate it. Please make sure you let me know your thoughts on Season 1 in the comments below. But I appreciate you watching. Have an amazing rest of your day, and I'll catch you on the next one in a bit. Peace.